If you're a frequent flyer in and out of New York, there'll be one name that fills you with dread. LaGuardia. We start tonight with the traffic trouble at LaGuardia Airport. Travelers say they're being bitten by swarms of mosquitoes. There's just a bird loose in the terminal? Other times, the situation's so bad, even pilots have to deal with this. Despite being a gateway to America's biggest city, LaGuardia's reputation was, well... If you didn't know anything about LaGuardia Airport and you showed up at Terminal B, you would probably be confused. Uh, the airport was extremely tight, extremely dense. Even the check-in areas were kind of odd and didn't represent what a, a typical American airport looked like. With that in mind, you might be surprised to learn that the airport now looks like this. Work's just finished on the first phase of an $8 billion project to rebuild LaGuardia. But with so many challenges, will this revamp really be enough? to save New York's most hated airport. It was back in 1935 that New York Mayor Fiorello LaGuardia ordered the construction of an airport to give the city a more centrally located terminal. It proved such a success that in 1964, a new building, the now infamous Terminal B, was built to meet demand. But as the volume of flights and the size of aircraft continued to grow, LaGuardia failed to keep up, despite the addition of two further terminals, and it began to rank at the bottom of league tables for customer satisfaction and delays on a pretty regular basis. I think really in the 80s and 90s is when the airport really started to show its age. Uh, and, and one of the reasons for that was the introduction of larger jets into LaGuardia Airport and the fact that more and more passengers needed to go through the airport on very large airplanes. Queues for check-in often snaked out the front door and modern security created bottlenecks in the already undersized structure. Corridors and waiting areas were overcrowded, with low ceilings that added to a feeling of congestion. And then, to cap everything off, the food was awful. If you have high expectations when it comes to food, you could not have brought those high expectations with you to LaGuardia Airport. You'd find a lot of fast foods at the airports. Uh, you'd find a lot of quick bites in a very unpleasant uh, atmosphere, almost like a rundown convenience store. In 2015, then New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced a bold plan to rebuild the airport. The dreaded Terminal B would be completely reconstructed in a $4 billion project. Transport connections would also be improved, creating quicker access to the nearby Grand Central Parkway and new public transport services such as a ferry. In a separate phase, $3.9 billion is being spent to rebuild the two Delta-owned terminals, C and D, as one structure. That new building will boast 120,000 square meters of space, double the size of the two previous terminals combined. And there'll be new concourses able to host some of the world's biggest and sexiest planes. Terminal B opened in January 2022, and the transformation was pretty dramatic. It's different than other airports in the United States. It's not this large box. You do feel kind of a sense of coziness along with it because it's on different levels, and that's a unique experience for an airport, but it's very New York-y because in New York there is no space, so you do build up, and that's exactly what's happened at LaGuardia Airport. To get to your gate now, you go up and over and down again. Uh, so it's definitely an intricate feeling, but it's sophisticated at the same time. And finally, an airport in New York City actually recognized is the fact that it's a New York airport. The original terminal had a large headhouse with four fingers emanating from it where planes would park. It was innovative for its day, but the design created dead ends where no planes could park, meaning some passengers had to walk further. The layout also caused problems as the planes departed for the runways. They'd have to be towed far enough away from the headhouse before they could start taxiing to avoid the thrust from their engines causing damage to the building. That led to a less than efficient airfield. The new terminal turns everything on its head and switches to a satellite configuration. There are now two satellite concourses joined to the headhouse by sky bridges and planes can pass underneath. But anyone who knows LaGuardia will realize it's gonna take more than one new terminal to solve this airport's problems. Many of its challenges are somewhat baked in and kind of stem from what first made LaGuardia an attractive spot for an airfield back in the 1930s. With a sea border on two sides, LaGuardia is also hemmed in by the Grand Central Parkway to the south, and that all rules out any kind of serious expansion short of a land reclamation project. It's also hampered by its runway arrangement. This intersection here 
it effectively guarantees the two runways can't be used at the same time. When LaGuardia Airport is in a particular configuration, uh, for example, landing on runway 31, departing on runway 4, the queue for departures is very, very long because of the intersecting runways, and we don't always know if the arrival is going to go through the intersection before they can clear the runway. That makes the queue very, very long and windy around the terminal area, and it's, in, it's been in situations like that where there's a delay getting out of the ramp, a long taxi queue to the runway, where I've actually missed my connecting flight in my next airport. In 2017, New York's then mayor Bill de Blasio unveiled plans to close the prison on Rikers Island and redevelop the site as the third runway for LaGuardia. The idea was to increase capacity at the airport by an exciting 40%. But again, location threw a spanner in the works. LaGuardia sits in some of the busiest airspace in the world. JFK, Tisabara and Newark are all in the area, and the skies above this city see some 3,000 flights a day. Adding another runway wouldn't exactly do much to cut congestion in the air, so the Rikers Island plans were quietly dropped. Now, aside from the issues at the airport itself, just getting there has always been a bit of a nightmare. The proposed ferry terminal was dropped during construction, and another key link has since been derailed. There was some promise in the Airtrain LaGuardia, a new 2.5km elevated railway which would have plugged into the New York subway and Long Island Railroad at Willits Point. But that idea was also shelved after it came under heavy criticism in Queens by residents who opposed the destruction it could cause to their neighbourhoods, and others who argued for a more direct link to Manhattan. As such, the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, which operates the airport, has now gone back to the drawing board. But in all honesty, it's hard to see a simple or affordable solution. In many ways, LaGuardia is a victim of its own success and may always struggle with its most intractable problems. Nevertheless, the new Terminal B is a triumph of design and construction and will make a degree of difference. So I definitely see two improvements with the new LaGuardia. The first one, of course, is yes, it is a nicer place to wait for your flight. Just look at the terminal, it's absolutely gorgeous. But the second improvement is the ramp itself. And that's something that a lot of travelers may not recognize, but there's enough room now to put two aircraft on the ramp at the same time. And that is definitely going to improve operational efficiency. Uh, I think that there's gonna be less situations where you sit at the gate and you need to wait for the aircraft behind you because they they're blocking the ramp because the tug is being removed. I think that there's going to be more opportunity now for those aircraft to be placed in a different location so that the aircraft at the gate can officially push back and go right to the taxiway. The teams who build these entirely new airports while keeping existing ones fully operational are testament to the skill of the construction sector. The terminals at LaGuardia are steadily being transformed from the butt of a bad joke into world-class facilities. But will that be enough to give people renewed faith in this airport, or will it end up as just a slightly nicer place to hurry up and wait? This video was powered by Bluebeam, you can learn more about that at the link below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make sure you're subscribed to the B1M.